A dark trade is striving here, in the heart of Mararaba, a bustling satellite town that stretches into Nigeria's federal capital territory. Mararaba sparks the density of street vendors, vehicles, and motorcycles that provide a mixed recipe of chaos, low life, and vigor. Among its thousands of residents, many from a blend of Nigeria's multicultural identities and low economic background, the community faces an explosion of youth unemployment and poverty. These factors are driving a shadow economy of kidney trade. Life in Mararaba is hard. As families struggle to make ends meet, the mostly idle youths also find ways to break the shackles of poverty. The youths plot their way into a dangerous trade of kidney sales. I've been doing for being a bed ninja. So, have you come and tell me see, that, okay, let's talk. Have you, you go out and talk? He told me that there is one business for town inside Abuja. They did they do kidney harvesting? So I want to tell and say they will carry my kidney go outside country and be how say no. And me and the person will get a kidney problem. We do tests. If we do okay, okay, then they will give me one point one. I want to tell them. I told him that his money is too small. Out of two million, I want to say no. Say they will give me one point one. We talk, 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 talk. Sometimes, okay, they will give me 1.2. Abbas is one of at least six young men from Mararaba that have followed this dangerous path. The black market trade in kidney thrives on three key groups of people. Kidney brokers, hospital staff, and local agents who scout for vulnerable youths and minors within communities. 16-year-old Yahya Musa was lured by his friend Abdul Rahman to sell his kidney. That friend acts as a local agent for kidney brokers. There is one day that one of my friends called me and, exp and told me that there is one hospital that they used to sell kidney there, that he, him to sell his own, that they are going to give us one million for the for, for the kidney selling. So after we went for the checkup for one week, they don't call me for the next day and tell me that I should come on Wednesday, that they are going to do the operation on Friday. So after I left home and go to there, they don't do some checkup for me. And on Friday, when I enter the operation, room around nine o'clock then I did the operation for me so after they do it finish then I give me one one million and one of the agents that take me to there took twenty thousand and the boy that took me to there take hundred thousand so the remaining money that they give to me it was eight seven seven hundred and 80,000. Yahaya is not alone. Adebayo Olua Tobi is another minor who was lured in February 2023 by his friend, also an agent to sell his kidney. On the first, this was no get right. Come on, 70 years old by kidney. Sell him. Come on, 70 years old by kidney. Sell them for this hospital. They come here, they tell us trash. And they can't even go marry. They come out 70 years old, boy, kidney. Why will it be like that? Which place do they work like this? Which place? Which place do they work like that? Let's say they say no get family. You carry them. They come out kidney for anybody. When I go here, I go go down marry to go do them. They go here, they are on a play. You know, we saw now. Nah, this guy don't reach 17 years old. This guy don't reach 17. Can person go come out kidney for anybody? 
it be like that too. I don't like you know it be like that. It be like that normally. I'm on a guy's judge this case. The young man in this video is accusing Alliance Hospital of harvesting his younger brother's kidney. He claims his younger brother was a minor at the time of the surgery. Now the same hospital is being accused of surgically removing the kidney of Yahya Musa and Oluwatobi. Both are minors and not of legal age to consent to organ donation. Kidneys are the world's most sought-after organ. An estimated one million people die each year from untreated kidney failure. In Nigeria, experts estimate over 20 million people battle kidney disease. In chronic kidney disease treatment depends on the stage. There are stages one to five, and depending on the stage at which the patient is diagnosed. For example, if the patient is diagnosed in the early stages, what we aim at is to identify reversible cause of the kidney failure and treat the reversible cause. I will give you an example. For example, if the kidney disease is due to obstruction to the flow of the urine, now we, we remove the obstruction either medically or through a surgical procedure and the flow of urine is restored and the kidney function is also restored. However, many patients in Nigeria with chronic kidney disease come to us late. So when they come at late stage, you cannot do much. You have to offer kidney replacement treatment. And this kidney replacement treatment is either in the form of dialysis or in the form of kidney transplant. Come to the hospital as we go. Now start the tests. As we start tests, the first person I want to give, the first person I want to give, she died before the listing. So they change another person for me. So as they change another person, we think they we can't do cross match, uh, kidney match, as in match. So and I leave house after before one month, like before one month before they started. I told my mother that I'm going to work for Lagos. So I know we'll come back now. And I tell my babe. So my babe TC I don't run safe. So as I go, they rent room for me. I stay there like one month before they start. So as they start, we start with the process. I do three days for the hospital. They plug me and drip. Before doing, I mean, the first person will be almost 12 people, different places. Desperation drives this trade. While young men Desperate for money, sell their kidney to escape poverty. Patients of renal failure need a kidney to extend their lives. But there are those in the middle who exploit both sides for money. In the course of this investigation, we found the name of a popular kidney broker, Mr. Mayo, almost on every donor's lip. Anytime they need some boys to work for their kidney or to remove it and sell it. He's like he, agents that they used to call him so that he would bring some boys. They would do some checkup at home. If your blood is O group or they used to like anything they need for A or B or O plus. So the guy used to call Abdul and told him that they need O, o plus this thing, kidney. Then he will now direct, he will now give us the number of mayo. Then if we go to the hospital, then mayo will do the many things. 
Have you met Abdurrahman's agent, Mio? Mio, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've met him? For Aminu this thing. For Aminu mm. what? Aminu Kini. Yes. Have you met him? Um, yeah. Do you have his picture? Mm -hmm. Do you have his number? Since you hear that they arrest us, he threw it as a He sing card. He threw it as a card. So I need get a number. Where is he? In in the for Lagos. In just he come here, he go lodge. After the walk, he go back. Mayo. Mm -hmm. Where is he from? Lagos. So Mayo comes from Lagos. Yeah. Mayo, according to many of the kidney donors we spoke with, is a major supplier of kidneys to Alliance Hospital. He has successfully facilitated the organ harvest of at least two minors that we know of in the hospital. However, the management of the hospital insists they do not know him and he is not on their payroll. Selling organ is illegal, is unethical. The repercussions are many. One, on the donor himself. Most of these commercial donors, they are not well prepared for the donation. They are not properly investigated. The aim of the, uh, of the people are those to get the organ, not the health and well-being of the donor himself. And, and, and more so, after donation, the donor is supposed to be followed up over time because he himself may be at risk of getting kidney disease in the future. Most especially these commercial donations that are not well prepared, well investigated to make sure that the patient is fit for donation. So in, 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 in environments that this thing happened, this commercial donation happened, the donors are at great health risk. These are one of the repercussions on the side of the donor. And on the side of the donor also, they are full of psychological issues, regrets, most of them, especially when they realize that the motive for the donation was money. And when they get the money, and the money will not be able to solve their problems, they ended up with regret. Most of them develop psychological issues. Some of them even got into depression. Aminu Yehuza was suicidal in June 2023. Like others, he received 1 million naira for his kidney, but was duped of half the money. The first successful kidney transplant in Nigeria was conducted in the year 2000 at the St. Nicholas Hospital in Lagos State. Since then, more than a dozen transplant facilities, some private, have come up. These has translated into a boom in kidney transplantation with records from the Global Observatory on Donation and Transplantation showing at least 1,353 kidney transplants in Nigeria from 2005 to date. But within some of these transplant facilities, ethical and legal lines have been crossed. Professional experts say healthcare providers must adhere to guidelines governing organ transplantation. You must make sure that you are guided by ethical issues of your profession, number one. Number two, you should be conscious and good fear you should be guided by your religious beliefs. Number two, you should also be patriotic. You should also have concern on other citizens, not only your patient. You, have, you should have concern. And there are laid down guidelines, both internationally and locally in Nigeria. We have 
guidelines governing organ transplantation. WHO, and there's a famous one, the, the Istanbul Declaration, which uh, gathered pe uh, people under WHO, different countries are represented, including Nigeria, and develop a guideline governing organ transplantation worldwide. And people should abide with that. Organ transplantation in Nigeria is guided by the National Health Act 2014, which criminalizes the removal of organs from anyone under the age of 18. The Act domiciles the powers of prescribing criteria for the approval of organ transplant facilities to the National Tertiary Health Institution Standard Committee. The committee headed by Professor Philip Abiodun, was inaugurated in 2021. However, he told Trust TV that his committee has just been inaugurated in November 2023 and insists that they will work to change the scenario in the country's tertiary health care system. The Ministry of Health, which supervises the committee, has failed to respond to various inquiries about Nigeria's hospitals that have met the criteria for organ transplant. The ministry ignored a freedom of information request on this and several requests for an interview. There are indications that trade in kidneys may have flourished for many years out of public sight. In Plateau State, one Nua Kekiri is being prosecuted for allegedly harvesting the kidney of his patient in 2018. In April 2023, Nigeria's former Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekwerimadu, his wife Beatrice and one Dr. Obinna Obeta were sentenced to a combined 24 years imprisonment after they were convicted for organ trafficking by the Central Criminal Court in London. Senator E.K. Ekrimadu and uh, Dr. Beatrice Ekrimadu. The judge heard that Ekrimadu, his wife and the doctor had flown in a 21-year-old trader from Lagos into the UK in a bid to obtain his kidney for the politician's sick daughter, Sonia. Back home, no one has been convicted for organ harvesting despite the provision of the law. The FCT Police Command in August said it was investigating the circumstances that led to the harvest of Ulua Tobi's kidney. But three months after the pronouncement, it is yet to make public the outcome of its investigation. We are still on it, we are investigating, and you're correct that the doctor was uh, arrested who is now re released on bail. And uh, the investigation is yet to be concluded. We are still investigating that uh, uh, incident. And uh, I'm sure the outcome of the investigation, we are not yet done. Mayor, the notorious kidney broker, may have fled Abuja. But we learned that some of his boys are still walking around the city and offering kidneys to anyone willing to buy. Now, to understand how this black market works, we went undercover and were linked to one of Mayor's trusted agents called Chiboy. We spoke with him as kidney brokers, and he immediately agreed to provide a ready donor the next day. We called Chiboy and requested for an O positive blood group. It was all the code we needed for the transaction. He asked for transport fare to make the supply the next day, and the money was paid into his Pampe bank account. At 12.30 p.m. on a Tuesday in October, Chiboy and a 38-year-old donor met us at an undisclosed location in Abuja. For now, the person is in Kano, but they're trying to bring the person here. So I'm trying to see whether um, Zenit go do um, or which hospital. Alliance be first. Which one first? Alliance. Why do you say so? Now they are the only one. They are not the one stop. Then after. But why you leave Alliance? 
May I not work again? No. We insisted on paying 1 million naira, but the Dunum continued to press for 1.5 million for his kidney. If I should give her this, hmm? many things I eat, I deny myself of it. Many things I do, I deny myself of it. You understand? Giving this is not that you know, you're not giving it now, just giving it for you, catching your phone or something. It's something you have a, a budget and you, 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 you said, okay, let me just do it to sacrifice this for you. Yes, my children, or oh my husband, or my family, or my future. But Chiboy insists his commission is 10% for every donor he supplies. They are not doing this thing. I made a pay. Chiboy. This yeah. mayor, I know this mayor. I know. Mayor, in the same we go, I carry almost five boys, if they go for that. No saying they do. Pay for the test, like five people now will pay for the test. Then any day where they need them, we will just carry them, they will carry them to me. At least they will pay me. Few weeks after meeting Chiboy, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, arrested Mayo based on the information and links provided by Trust TV. NAPTIP and other organizations have confirmed that they are building a case against Mayo and his accomplices. But for the young men who have taken this dangerous path, there is now pain and regrets. No, I went to do it. Because my mother's plan is she wants me to join Suja and, and now I can't. So, so I'm, not, I'm not happy. Nachi, Nda, Chi, Naga doctor Nandi, one now, Aiki. Kora in a Koranch, Nafaduan, Ko Azuchi, and Napala, Kumana Prusa, my Aish, Napala. So, say, Kuma Hario, Allah, I saw a sununa, I'm a doctor, Ghana Gashiba. So, what I may want now, be a Kamata Kakama Yaro, Koshini, a Gaya Makayanasu, be a Kamata Kadokiaro, Ba, shower and yai, to Enzida Das Mutu, Zai Zuba the Gao, which is Sukena. The families of the minors insist they want compensation against any future health implication their children may encounter. Abu one day kept a word among ten days and children have been in NASA. Kaga, when you look at Chiabu one day, yeah, Parua. Eh? A quabu one day, they were the Bose Eva. Sooner than they were. One day, about one day, they must have come with the same. Bound the Okinawa is the same in Abu Yajizu. One day, she knew. I'm working with the Akitan Manai. I've been there with Sikamasa. This, the way where they look this boy, like say, it's not, I just they look like say, na photo they do. It's not like they say, na a complete body again. So I'm looking like photo. So, but God, it's only God who have power to say something. But I they look, but people they tell me that nothing God cannot do. He can succeed this. And they are not want, I don't want me to bury my son. I want them to bury me. But as this thing happened, are they looking like just like ordinary picture? When I see, I know they're happy. Matter, I 
Kerja benda nera, nera ni ingin asam untuk cikin halaka. Inca benda nera, tak kerja awal halah, kerja awal halaka. Bermula benda nana, ana fighting akan yalan ni. Ia orang yang orang halik di sini, mba magen kerja mutu aku. Tak kerja kau ni aku iya baki hidup lah, esen meiki. Nera, nera, ingin asam untuk halaka. Just came again. You can now look at Matasa. See how good you do Allah. Why you read it? Tell us in Allah's time. 